Hello, my name is Chris. I am a mentor on Robot Casserole, first robotics competition team 1736. Today, I am going to explain how to make some food. Caution. The following involves fire, potentially dangerous chemicals, and pointy objects. Parental supervision is required. This is an instructional video on how to make delicious pulled pork. First, we must ask ourselves, what is barbecue? Barbecue is the generic term of a large variety of cooking techniques, generally using open flame and outdoor cooking equipment. It is heavily regionally influenced, but is always delicious. We will be using the low and slow method to cook a large cut of meat. The duration and temperature helps break down tough fibers in the meat, leaving it tender and juicy. We start with a pork butt roast. We got this one on sale. Do you know what part of the pig a butt roast comes from? That's correct, the shoulder. The first step is to perform a technique called dry brining on the meat. This involves applying a liberal layer of salt to all sides. Then, leave the meat in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. You should probably cover yours, unlike I did. The salt will penetrate deeply into the meat, starting the process of breaking down tough fibers and flavoring the roast. We will now prepare a basic dry rub. This is the first half of the flavoring that will be applied to the meat. Most rubs involve some combination of dried spices, including paprika, garlic powder, cumin, and mustard powder. Brown sugar is also very common. I prefer to add some additional flavors, including thyme, rosemary, and ginger. Mix your choice of spices together in an airtight container, shaking to combine. Pull the pork out of the fridge and move it to a large platter. If the surface has dried out, splash a bit of water or yellow mustard on it. Then, liberally apply the rub to all sides. Prepare your cooking device of choice. I am using a pellet smoker, which burns small sawdust pellets for fuel and uses electronic controls to maintain a set temperature. Electric and offset smokers work just as well. Get the fire going and the temperature steady at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. One key to juicy, tender results is to keep the temperature stable. Large, repeated swings in temperature cause the meat to expand and contract, expelling its juices and leaving the meat dry. A water pan is sometimes useful to add thermal mass to the cook chamber, as well as raising the relative humidity. Once the temperature is stable, place the pork butt onto the smoker and close the lid. And now we wait. During the first few hours, the meat soaks up the flavor of the wood smoke of the fire it is cooked over. This is the other major component of the flavor of the meat. You should expect the total cook time to take about 45 minutes per pound of meat. However, it is difficult to judge by time alone. We use a thermometer to measure the internal temperature of the meat. Insert the probe into the center of the thickest portion of the meat, away from any bones. When the meat's internal temperature reaches 160 degrees, it would be safe to eat. However, muscle fibers will have not broken down fully yet, and the meat will be very tough and hard to pull. We must continue cooking. To help speed this process, we will wrap the meat between two layers of foil. This will slow the rate of evaporation, allowing more energy to go into raising the temperature of the meat, 
as well as trapping moisture inside. Replace the wrapped meat into the smoker, along with the temperature probe. And now, we wait again. Continue to cook the meat at 250 degrees until the internal temperature reads somewhere between 195 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, take the meat off the smoker and allow it to rest. Resting allows the meat fibers to relax and soak up delicious juices. Shredding it immediately would let all that goodness run out and onto the floor. Poppy. After 15 minutes of rest, the meat is ready to be pulled. The single bone in the roast slides out with ease. Notice the beautiful black crust formed by the rub interacting with the fire. Also notice the red smoke ring on the outer crust of the meat, a sure sign that this has been cooked long and slow over a real fire. And finally, note the tender and supple meat, soft and decadent, a true upstanding citizen of Flavortown. Heat a small bowl of your favorite barbecue sauce to serve alongside, as folks may like more or less sauce on the meat. The meat is wonderful on its own, and also wonderful heaped onto a toasted brioche bun. Serve with coleslaw, homemade pickles, and potato salad. <laughs>